you know, if you go down the rest of the list, I mean, Real Madrid has surpassed Manchester United as the most valuable soccer team in the world, but it's not like Manchester United slipping. I mean, they went up a lot. They're only 150 million behind Real at this point, and they've done a great job in Asia with new sponsorships, and also here in the U.S. I mean, they have the GM sponsorship with Chevrolet now. Uh, that's a very rich deal. And one of the things I find interesting too, you know, you're talking about the English teams going outside of Europe. They've been doing a good job in the U.S. Yeah, Chelsea. They sold out Yankee Stadium last year against right. Paris Saint-Germain. They're going to have another match there uh, this May. Uh, AS Roma had a game up at uh, Fenway Park in Boston. That sold out. So it seems like the inroads that European teams are making in the U.S. Uh, is, is catching on. And uh, they do it as friendlies. It may not be a big revenue producer per se, but you get to that brand extension where they leverage it into more sponsorships. Right, I mean, it clearly adds at the margin when you have these friendlies. And a, a very important thing about the U.S., the U.S. is a huge market and the demographic trends are, are becoming very favorable for soccer as a sport here. So we have Brazil is the new entrant and that's really interesting because we're talking about globalization and about new sponsors. What else can we see in terms of how the list has been growing? Well, you're definitely seeing Despite the fact that all the teams are going up in value among the top 20, you're still seeing a widening gulf. I mean, there's no way Newcastle, United at the bottom of the list, uh, is ever going to come close in my lifetime to catching Manchester United in terms of revenue or value. Uh, having said that, these fair play rules where teams have to be self-funding, in other words, they can't rely on debt to pay for players, that seems to be helping the overall profitability of the top team. So for example, the average operating income, EBITDA, if you will, yeah. of the top 20, $42 million last year. Okay, that equates out to an operating margin of 14%. Right. So overall profitability is good. Debt levels are not high. I think maybe three teams lost money, and you know, Manchester City, one of them, self-funded by a Middle Eastern sheik. I mean, he's really not concerned about the bottom line at this point. Uh, again, brand extension, building up the name. They uh, won the EPL last year, so he's built up that team. Uh, so I think the financial health overall is very strong for the top 20, but there is a widening gulf between the teams at the top of the list and those at the bottom. I think that uh, one of the uh, great examples of financial prudence on the list are the German teams. Yeah. They almost all tend to be very profitable. They don't rely as much as, let's say, the Italian teams or the English teams on advancing far in the Champions League or winning their domestic league uh, for profitability. They tend to have strict budgets and they tend to be profitable regardless of how well they do on the pitch. I think the other way you're going to see some teams try to uh, get a leg up or get uh, some of the big money that some of the top name teams like Arsenal and Real and Manchester United have is with new stadiums. You're seeing AS Roma do that, Inter Milan's trying to do that. So uh, that's some of the French teams have, are also building new stadiums uh, like Lyonnais. So that's going to be really the next hub is who can get the modern stadiums or the bigger stadiums to compete. That will give them the cash flow to get some of the star players without having to borrow or uh, relying on rich investors for money.